Hey guys, so I'm in a different location again this week and that is because I thought it would be fun to do a little pamper session with this little girl. She is a little bit overdue for a trim, brushing and nail trimming and since it's her birthday I thought this would be a cute little pamper session for her so she's all pretty for her birthday. Now I do have some treats. I have some banana that I'll give her just so she stays. So I also have my grooming kit right here. So I have all my brushes and my nails. So I'm just going to walk you through it, talk about my three years with this little one. And yeah, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the flicker brush right here. This is what you call a flicker brush for those who don't know. It's just your basic metal brush. And I'm going to brush her hair through. Now, Jersey Woolies are very, very thick coated. So they get matted quite quickly. I brush her at least four times a week. She gets trimmed. So I'm just going to go ahead and brush. So let's talk about this little fuzzy cotton ball I have in front of me. I got Nala in October 2017. Now, before I had Nala, I obviously had Gigi, my original satin rabbit. And when I was researching into rabbit care, it got really into the rabbit industry, I found Angoras and Jersey Woolies, and I fell in love with them. Straight away, I did so much like research and I was always looking at pictures. So a Jersey Woolly or a Angora was always a dream breed of mine. Then one day we were at a pet store. It's not like a main chain pet store. It's called Bird and Fish Place. But they mainly sell bird and fish stuff. And on occasion, they'll get things like guinea pigs, rabbits, chickens, things like that. And I saw this little girl. She was about the size of my two hands together. And she was in a little purple cage, the ones that are advertised for guinea pigs, even though they're way too small. And she ran up to me straight away. She was so social. And I just fell in love with her. And I had spoken to my mum because she obviously knew how much I loved Jersey Woolly. And I was like, I could get Gigi a friend. So we put Nala on hold and we thought about it for two days so I could work out, you know, finance and things like that. Because obviously I was a lot younger and I wasn't as financially stable as I am now type thing. I only had two pets at that stage. That was Sage, my cockatiel, and Gigi. So, so I put her on hold, and then the like two days later, I was like, you know what, I'm gonna do it. So my mum ended up picking Nala up while I was at school, and it's crazy because the first day she got brought home, uh, mum had her on the dining table. No, we did get a new dining table, so it wasn't this specific dining table. table. But it's, it's funny because the dining table was the first thing she knew about our house. Now, she wasn't in the greatest conditions. Um, she did have fleas and mites, and her coat was quite matted. But coming from a pet store, I mean, they're not really going to be too well on keeping up to date with her coat um yes i supported a pet store luckily it's not a chain pet store and i now will refuse to support that pet store i mean i know the lady there very well i've helped and saved many rabbits there i'm very well known there but when i got nala i was unaware of where she was getting her rabbits from it does turn out these are from a backyard breeder which I regret, I wish I didn't support that. Luckily with Cloudy, although I got him from the same store, they didn't make profit off him. And by the way, I'm going in with this small tooth comb and really 
working around her chin area because that's where they match the most. But that was Marla. I fixed her up and she obviously blossomed to be a very healthy looking girl. So I got Marla at two months old and this photo here is when she was three months. Now she was harness trained. I mean, I haven't had that harness on her in a very long time. But that was just a little DIY harness I did. And she used to roam around the backyard with Gigi and they loved it. She still does get to go at the backyard, but she's obviously chained now and she doesn't use a harness at all. So yeah, that was a little baby Nala. I'm then I'm going to take some hair scissors and I'm going to cut out the mat that I personally can't get out with the I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see it, but there is a mat right here that needs to come out. So I'm just gonna snip it, and that is how thick Jersey Woolies so it is. So it's a lot of work, hey Nala. But you're a good girl when you sit here. So just gonna feel around, make sure there's no other mat that I can feel. So a little bit about Nala and her personality. So Nala is a very curious, cheeky girl. She likes getting into mischief. She is very, very attention seeking. Um, when I first opened the pet room door, she is always the first one to greet me. And she's always the first one to run out. She's an to girl like that, which I mean, for the most part, is fine because our house is quite animal proof. But it's annoying because sometimes I'm not ready to supervise her, so I have to go rounding up like she's a sheep. Um, I mean, she looks like one. Hey, hi. So, yes, she likes to get into mischief. If I'm cleaning the pet room, like I'm sleeping or something, she always has to get in the way of the dust pan which can be very, very frustrating. She is very attention seeking and it's her way or no way. She will not hesitate to nudge you or to nibble at you. I mean, she's not mean, she's not aggressive, but she won't hesitate to nudge you if you're standing in the kitchen or if I'm standing in the pet room feeding the birds or something. She will come up to your feet and she will nudge you. And sometimes when she's really in a demanding mood, she will give your foot a little nibble, or if you're sitting on the floor, like I do floor time with the guinea pigs a lot in the pet room, like I'll sit and have one of the guinea pigs on my lap, she'll come up and she'll nibble my knee to be like, hey mum, I'm here. So she's a very unique little girl. She does have a lot of issues, and that is one thing that I'm going to have to touch up today, because if you look at her private area, she does have some stuck that's her trope right here, so I am going to have to cut that off and clean up. Just gonna cut around here. Obviously, you have to be very, very careful. And I'm also going to thin out the fur on her feet because she does get quite a lot of fur around her feet and they tend to knot up. Now one thing I love about owning Jersey Woolies, now this might not be for old Jersey Woolies but personally for me, is I don't have to deal with sore hocks because they have so much fur on their feet that it kind of acts as a protection. With Gigi, her being a satin, she was very prone to sore hocks because she had a very very thin layer of fur but with Jersey Woolies, I've never had to deal with that, which is great. Because dealing with sore hocks is very, very annoying. The preface is, as you will see, she, she is sitting up right. Never put your rabbit on their back. back. That is called trancing. And you can kill them if left too long. That is a state of fear. And it's not your rabbit being in shock. That's what they would do if they feel like they're about to be killed in the wild. So never 
flip your rubber on its back if you're doing things like feet work, sit them up on their bum like they're sitting like a human and work with them like this. Now your rabbit might not agree with it at the start but you have to train them as you can see she is very very desensitized to me holding her. You handle your rabbits a lot and you work with them you will get them to this stage. So I got all the mats out that I need and I've cleaned up as much as I can around her bum area. Now I'm going to get my little scissors. That's the thing with Jersey wool is fur gets in your nose and it's very, very annoying. So if I'm scratching my nose a lot, that is why. So I'm going to get my little scissors that has the blunt tip and I'm going to clean up around her eye area. Now she does have very goopy eyes. I've asked many vets and they don't give me anything. So I just trim up as much as I need and sometimes I will do a salt wash with them if they're getting very bad. So she's a very dirty girl, that's one thing about Nala. She's extremely dirty. She has, has to get in all the mess, make all the mess. So no matter what you feed her or what you do, she's just a brat. Like, I don't know if you can see this, but her face is so grotty. Even her paws, just everything about her, she's a grot. Rabbits are supposed to be so clean, clean, which my other rabbits are. You go to my mum's rabbit room, spotless. This one, mm -mm. she has to get her face into everything and get grubby, hey? You're a weird one, aren't you? I'm just going to give a one for all brush again. Before I get into the trimming, let's give her some banana. Yep, she knows what I'm doing. Hey, Bobby. Oh, don't stand on the scissors. Come on, Bobby. She's had her little banana tree. Hey, with your yummy? With your yummy? We trim her hair short. Now, we do have shears, which I was thinking of using, but I'm going to use the shears after. So first, I'm going to get the bulk of the length off, um, and then I'm going to go in and touch up with the shears. So, so I'm basically just going to be grabbing hunks of the fur and cutting. To the groomers out there, you're probably cringing and that's okay. But this is just what I do, what works for me. I need to get a bit of the length off before putting shearers through it. Um, otherwise, it's just a bit too hard to do it and then the shearers get a bit too hot. Okay, so as you can tell, she's looking a little bit puffy, but I've gone ahead and taken off quite a bit of that length all over her body. Now I'm going to take my shoes and I'm going to put on the second smallest blade. And I'm oops. Just going to even it out. That has kind of neatened her up. I don't know how much you're going to be able to notice it. But basically, what the sheriff has done is just kind of gave her the less jagged. I'm going to get the thicker brush. And I am just going to brush her out again. And then we can go on to her nails. This is the aftermath of that little grooming session. So they are very, very hairy. So if you don't like fur everywhere, jersey will leave them off. I'm going to take my nail scissors and I'm going to trim her nails. Starting off with the front. And never forget their little dew claw. This is the one that she acts up on the most. But their dew claw does need to be 
trimmed. Switching to the other side and I'll show you how I do back nails because I know many rubber owners struggle with doing back nails. Trust me, I used to struggle when I had Gigi, my first rabbit, but I've learned how to do it with no hassles. Now for back nails, you're actually going to get back into this position and again rabbits will most often stick their uh, foot out and trim this way you get a clear view so that is Mala all nice and groomed she's had her nails done she's had her coat brushed and trimmed she's feeling very very pretty now hey Mala Feeling very pretty. Huh? You're a pretty girl. You're such a pretty girl. Mwah.